Ah, uh, good evening, everybody. The, let me turn off that dishwasher. It's causing noise. <coughs> okay. Happy Tuesday. Um, I think it's ah, is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Ah, Tuesday, right? Happy Tuesday. So yesterday was Monday and I did not do this human knowledge series uh, in Google YouTube, but instead I did Facebook Live. Why? Because it's kind of celebration time. Like, um, so I call that human knowledge extension. Uh, there are some more audience in the Facebook, so I do that like, you know, if I go to a vacation or if I want to like celebrate something. So yesterday uh, I did Facebook Live and um, and uh, so what was the celebration? Yeah, finally, uh, finally I published this book. Not in a journal, they rejected it. Okay, so I submit to another journal, but in the meanwhile, I submit to do to an uh, online database and yeah, they published it. Online database, still online publisher publication okay yeah it's not peer review journal but still yeah? we'll call it publication eh? nonetheless yeah? so it, it got published online database and yeah 52 pages yeah I finished it like Sunday Sunday evening and uh, yeah so to celebrate to that publication yeah finishing of the paper yeah i did uh facebook live and i didn't talk about too much human allergy stuff just talk about random stuff like uh there's this fantastic actress like rising star her name is milana weintrub milana weintrub she's like uzbekistan immigrant and she came to America like when she was three, something like that. She's three years old. Yeah, so she's a very attractive lady and uh, she probably is in her mid-twenties, late-twenties, even early-thirties, that I don't know. All right. But she made a lot of YouTube videos and like comedy gigs. And it, it was very well done, very... Comedy. Yeah, she, she seems to be a very talented comedy writer as well. And director, writer, producer, okay. Actor. Because startup actors, they do all that stuff. Even singing, songwriting sometimes. She seems to be a very multi talented individual, okay. And she also paint very well. <laughs> yeah, in Hollywood, Los Angeles, California, you see a lot of that. Multi talented individuals. You have filmmakers, writers, directors, actors, actresses, models. Yeah, she's one of those. She seems to be a rising star. She was famous for the... the she was... She, oh. She's most famous for AT&T commercials. Uh, the, her character's name is Lily Adams. The AT&T commercial. She did really well, she used, because she seemed to be a very talented actress. Really, really, really. And her comedy gigs in the YouTube, I, I, I did watch some of them and... Yeah, she was very good. Yeah. I wish her the best. I, sh I hope she make take bigger and bigger roles and bigger and bigger movies and... I hope she becomes the next star. Like, yeah, the any given era you have this female actress, right? Back in the days, it was, it was like Jennifer Love Hewitt, then Jennifer Lopez, and then Lindsay Lohan, and then another, 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 right? I hope she, she. I think she has talents, and she she's a very beautiful lady too. And I think she she got she a very good chance of. Being the next big actress in America. 
Hopefully, yeah, I should have a text. <sighs> but later, I, at some point, I think she tanned her skin. And I didn't like that. She used to have very lighter skin. I don't get me wrong. Yeah, African Americans, brown people, white people, they're all beautiful. But her natural skin tone is a light brown. And I think that's something she should protect and preserve her natural herself, her skin color, as opposed to artificially tanning them. So yeah, she started, she like at one point in her career, she tanned her skin. I didn't like it. She didn't look good at all in her artificial tanned skin. No, she did not look good. It could have been one of some acting character her acting job may have demanded it okay i think she got a tattoo as well <laughs> that's horrible she shouldn't have done that okay i think she also has some plastic surgery you know chest area you know mm, we guys typically we don't like that okay you, you just look too art artificial right we guys don't like it. I, I know some women have those plastic surgeries. Maybe they feel insecure about their natural chest area, the size. But we guys, we prefer natural. We don't like artificial stuff. We don't. Okay. It's, it's just women, female insecurity, I guess. All right. And some people do it. Anyways. So, uh, yeah, I wish her the best. She's not a perfect human being, but uh, she got her foibles and well, I wish her the best. Hopefully she get out, make a lot of movies, big movies, TV shows. Yeah, she, I think she'll do great. Yeah. She got talents. Good looks. Of course, she's kind of getting old. All right, I think she's like late twenties or early thirties. Yeah, I can. She doesn't have that girlish, young, like early twenties. That kind of charm, very, like very um childlike kind of charm. Yeah, nowadays she maybe she does still has have it. I don't know. She kind of changes her looks, so I don't know. But uh, hopefully, she make a lot of movies. Well, she's kind of still young, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what she looks like now. But back in the days, like, well, when was she making all these YouTube videos? Maybe about 10 years ago. That's when she was like kind of early 20s, mid 20s, I guess. So back in like 2010, I think. Yeah, she, she, she was really charming back then. Nowadays, I don't know. Maybe she, she, she still is. I, I just don't know what she looks like now. But some of the photos I saw or YouTube videos, whatever, eh, kind of, yeah, not the same, right? But some women get more beautiful as they age. Some women get more stylish, more beautiful as they age. Some women are even very beautiful in their 70s, 60s, 50s, right? Well, she's like, well, early 30s, I guess, right now. Yeah, Milana Vine Troop. So she's still young. Hopefully she doesn't do any self-destructive things like obesity or tattoos or tanning, hopefully she doesn't do any more of that kind of self-destructive things. All right. yeah. Hopefully she does exercise and diet. Yeah, we take five minutes break, okay? So, hey, welcome to humanology, anything goes, okay? Yeah, we are not politically correct at all. We, we, are, we are civil, eh? we break no laws, and we are courteous, uh, but we are very, honest and not blunt but we say things that 
just in our minds. Okay, so there are some ideologies. Uh, we criticize ideologies, not the people, though. Okay, but we'll take five minutes break. Welcome to Humanology. Thank you. We'll be back. There we go. Ah, give me a second. There we go. Okay. This window is the only window that opens nowadays. Why? It's all frozen. Because it's single digit nowadays in Alaska. So all the other windows cannot be opened. Yeah, it's quite chilly these days. And um so What do you talk about now? Yeah, sure. Diet and exercise, okay? You don't get to s s hear politicians or media talking about diet and exercise. Even doctors, I mean, in the media, they don't talk about diet and exercise, strengthening your immune system. Why? But they don't know. Even medical doctors, some of them know. Most of them don't. At least people, doctors in the media, okay? Why? Maybe they know. But they're just afraid to say it. But that's the only solution to this coronavirus. Nobody's talking about it in the media. Okay, nobody. Well, first of all, most science, most uh, politicians, they are scientifically illiterate. They don't understand science. Okay, even the scientists who are out there in the media, like Dr. Fauci, he learns, but a lot, but he does not know how to apply what he learned to real situations. 
Okay. Vaccine, vaccine. I, mean, I, I don't. I, I don't think that's the solution. It's diet and exercise. It's a healthy diet, regular exercise. That, that's the only solution. There is no other solution. Why? Coronavirus will spread because it's just like molecular diffusion, right? You drop a drop of ink into a glass of water, it spread, right? Coronavirus, yeah, we mask wearing, it will only slow down the spread of coronavirus. Eventually, it will just spread around, right? It's about diet and exercise. That, that's the only solution. There's no other solution, okay? Yeah, mask wearing, it will only slow down the spread, okay? Eventually, like coronavirus, I heard the news. It, I think there's three guys, there's kind of like three studios in Texas, national radio show, uh, something like Mar Markle, Van Camp, and Robbins, something like that. Okay. They're good. Yeah, they said, yeah, hey, are, are people going to start masking the dogs? What if dogs get coronavirus and spread it around? So are you going to, are we starting to, mask the dogs too good point right i didn't think of that but yeah i mean coronavirus our clothing yeah it, it can be there in the air mask wearing it can only prevent so far it will only slow down things okay mask wearing it lockdown it doesn't work eventually Okay, this is principle of molecular diffusion, all right, just like virus, just like dirt in the air. Yeah, it will spread around, so the only way is to uh, strengthen our immune system by exercise and diet, that's it. The personal hygiene, of course, all right, they don't know. So, well, whatever, what can I do? Maybe I'll write some about the next paper. Uh, <coughs> so next paper, yeah, I will, the first part of next paper, it will be about metaphysics. It will be about uh, copiomology and thai dualism. Yeah, kind of met mathematical metaphysics, okay. I've read two papers about mathematical metaphysics and they don't seem to have substance or content. To me, it feels too much like pedantic and just enumeration of difficult words, right, and like, uh, they're more like, I, I appreciate what they did, but uh, um, my impression is that, probably I, I will cite that pap those papers, two papers, okay, uh, they, they make good attempt, that's good, but um, I appreciate what they did, but uh, my impression is that criticism is that uh, they didn't quite understand the or follow the Occam's razor principle. Okay, uh, a mathematical model should be as simple as possible. Okay, or well, any theoretical model should be as simple as possible. But my impression of their two papers, their theories, they lack content substance all they have is very something extremely difficult methodology all right so my papers in metaphysics is like this okay we come up with a mathematical model to explain real world phenomenon metaphysical phenomenon and we want to explain metaphysical phenomenon like ideologies and stuff using mathematical model and we use very basic mathematical models like dot product audition set theory that's it a model should not be more difficult than the phenomenon itself it should be as simple as possible but some metaphysical uh, mathematical metaphysical paper i've read is the other way they have extremely complex model, but they are not modeling anything. They are not explaining any real world phenomena. So that's the common, that has been very common criticism throughout the Western history 
about metaphysics. It's just too complex, and but they're not really describing anything. They're quite useless. And that kind of be behaviorism attitude is still continuing today, it seems. Okay. Yeah, I'm not drinking alcohol because uh, I drank too much yesterday, okay. Yeah, yesterday in the Facebook Live, I also did a lot of martial arts too, okay. It was nice. Nobody was watching it, nobody. It was Facebook Live on Monday evening, right? Nobody was watching it. Because, like, weeks ago, when I did Facebook Live, a couple of friends of mine, maybe three, four, five friends of mine watched it, okay. Later on, yeah, more people watched the recorded version, but uh, when I did Facebook Live yesterday, nobody was watching it. Which, which is fine. Yeah, that's okay. We'll take five minutes, okay? Now it's getting really warm here. So, let's talk about entertainers, huh? Yeah, Billie Eilish, I mean, I liked her at first. She, she's a very good looking lady, young lady, and she was like very slender, and when she, she was great at first. But later on, she became very weird, like she started to dye her hair, and she started to gain weight. So, <laughs> in a very short period of time, probably in less than one year. Hmm, so I stopped liking her, okay, and yeah, so yeah, hopefully this, what, what's her name, Mil Milana, Milana Vaintrup, she doesn't go down the same path as like uh, many others, 
But when it comes to Taylor Swift, I, sh I think she's doing great. Of course, I'm not a huge fan of her music. But she she still has no tattoos. She didn't gain any weight. Like Madonna, yeah, she, she don't, she's still fit. She probably in, is in her 50s or 60s. She looks great. She's in great shape. She has no tattoos. That's great. So some, oh, look at Grease. What's her name? Olivia Newton-John. Again, I do not like her singing style at all. I don't like her singing style. It's too painstaking to listen to. Strange singing vocal style she has. So no, I'm not a huge fan of her at all, her music. But she maintains her body. She's in the 70s, 80s by now. She's in great shape and she's still very beautiful. Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. What else? So, let's talk about some of this Milan, Milana, yeah, Milan, that means in French, like 1,000 years, right? There's some French talk about that, Napoleon, Milan. Because when I was studying French, I forgot French, okay, how, how old, old are you? I have no idea how to say it in French. I used to know. Let me look it up. Pretty cool, man. Comment tang? Avez-vous? How do how do old do you have? How much age do you have? Get large, have you? Okay, get large, have you? And Napoleon said, "Tomorrow." How do you say tomorrow in French? Aujourd'hui, that's today, right? Tomorrow is. Uh, <sighs> The man. I will have. Je voudrais, je voudrais, je voudrais Milan. Yeah, tomorrow I will have. Joche, the man Joche, Mil, Milan, Milan, whatever. So yeah, because he was about to conquer this Italian town, Milan. So, so yeah, it's like 1,000 years, that's what it means in French, okay, so whatever. So, in her skit, it's kind of an interview style, right? So, it's two girls, yeah. She and her friend, actress, fellow actress. So this girl, uh, Milana, she's Jewish. She's like, so light brown skin. I guess she's like half Caucasian, half Middle Eastern, something like that, right? And of course, she's brunette, right? Yeah. And then her actress friend, this partner in that venture, YouTube video venture, she's like, uh, and she's 100% Caucasian lady. Blonde. They are both very beautiful, right? Yeah. So they invite a guest. Male or female, right? And then have an interview for like three minutes, four minutes. I guess it was before Google YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah, before the modern acquisition by Google, YouTube used to have this strict minute limit. Right, ten minimum, maximum, ten minute maximum, something like that. Right, so maybe it was filmed up back then, but it's high quality production, really. They use very good camera and cameraman lighting. It was very professionally done. Those YouTube videos they uploaded, right? I, I could tell. Yeah, they did invest some money into it. I can. 
tell the props and location and everything. Right? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you know? and sometimes kind of boring, but it was it was pretty good. Very well done. Yeah. Right. So next paper will be about copiomology, dialism, and so. But before that, the review of previous paper, there will be four sections of this paper. Um, because I forgot to elaborate on something like trajectory, the pattern of ideologies evolution or trajectory, okay. Anti Xism, then pro Xism, then hyper pro Xism. It could be back in the days, anti gayism, anti Semitism, anti feminism, anti ethnicism, then pro feminism, pro gayism, pro ethnicism. Pro Semitism and then hyper pro blah 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 blah. It, it all just follows the same pattern. Ideologies, trajectory, evolution, okay. Yeah. Inferior right, equal right, and then superior right. And then what's the next? Probably we'll fall back to the equal right. It's a swinging pendulum kind of equilibrium, right? Yeah, people will start to push back to those hyper pro ideologies, right? Because look, how many percentage of American population are LGBT community members? They're like what by now like five percent, right? Not that many people. So hyper pro gayism is bound to fall back. Okay. How many people are African Americans in America? Ten percent, twenty, right? So hyper pro ebonism is bound to push back later on. Why? Because ninety percent of us also are not African Americans in America. Okay, so yeah, they kind of hyper pro ideologies. They what goes up must fall down, come down, right? So like that, okay. So yeah, I, I didn't quite elaborate on that in the previous paper. So I'm gonna write that in this paper. Okay. Although <laughs> it's a different topic, top paper, but well, in human analogy, anything goes. So yeah. Oh, it will take five minutes, bro. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm salivating too much for whatever reason. So it will take five minutes, bro. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Ah. Uh.
Wow, it is cold. Let's see what's temperature outside. 8 degrees. That's not bad. That's not bad. Still single digit though. <sighs> yeah, so the COVID nineteen, yeah, asympt asymptomatic carrier. That concept already existed, okay, in the context of STD, sexually transmitted diseases, viral shedding, okay? But the likelihood is very low. A person is a carrier, let's say I have COVID-19, hypothetically, or cold virus, or whatever. Yeah, let's say influenza, whatever. Most people are actually. Cold virus, flu, Influenza virus, rhinovirus, or cold vi cold flu, I mean, co common cold, everybody has it. So everybody is asymptomatic carrier, okay? But a person is asymptomatic because the population of those viruses in the body is in check. So the probability of asymp asymptomatic transition of virus is very low. All right. It's probability. It's not. It's not black and white. It's not yes or no. It's not Boolean. You know, it's sliding scale. It's probability zero to one hundred percent. They don't know, and even scientists they don't talk about it. Why? Because they don't have time to think of things independently. They are not independent thinkers. They have this herd mentality. Go along the mainstream, okay? And yeah, the Faucian fascism. Yeah, he was all over money, power, fame. He loved being famous, getting interviews, invited to some talk shows. He enjoys that. So it benefits him or some doctors who get a lot of interviews, media exposure, get a lot of money. It benefits them if people are very scared. Yeah? Pharmaceutical companies, they benefit from all this pandemic too. So, there's some this, uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's, it's conspiracy, but there's some this motive, this uh, incentive in some industries who benefit from all this to incite more fear, panic, all right? It's an ulterior motive, okay? And most people, they're busy, right? They're busy with their family, their jobs, right? Paying their mortgage and stuff. So they don't have time to think things through. So they just go along, right? Politicians, they're busy too. Okay, all those meetings. They don't have time to think. So let's just repeat what other people say. Media people, journalists, they are busy too. Okay? And yeah, when there is panic, big news material, they make a lot of money from this panic. It serves their financial purpose to exaggerate this kind of panic situation because big news material, they make a lot of money off of this. This scare, this fear, right? Some ulterior motive. Okay, so this simple solution is exercise and diet, healthy immune system, but nobody's talking about it. Why? Because nobody's making money off of that. Exercise and diet, it doesn't cost. Actually, it saves money. If I'm on a diet, I buy less food. So then, food industry, they make less money off of that. So that's, that's not their financial interest. Pecuniary, money interest, right? If I do exercise, it doesn't cost me any money. So do, nobody else is making any money. 
Actually, they are losing money. Why? Because I'm healthy. So I don't go to hospital. I don't buy drugs. I'm healthy. So doctors, nurses, hospitals, they are not making any money off of me being healthy. Right? So why would they advocate for that? Exercise and diet, they would decrease their income. Food industry, medical industry, they're going to make less money if we are to, everybody do diet and exercise and be healthy. Huh? That's one way to think about it, right? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Welcome to Humanology. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll drink a little, okay? Yeah. <coughs> so these two girls, I think, uh, so Melana and her friend is Stevie, I think. The, they are very beautiful blonde lady. Caucasian, 100%. Okay, so blue eye. I, I, her eyes is more like green, like hazel. But still, very beautiful ladies. Yeah, very fair skin. White skin, fair skin, that's beautiful, right? Black skin, brown skin, they are beautiful too. They are all beautiful. Right? Yeah. Anyway. And blonde hair is very beautiful hair, right? Yeah. So, when I was watching their interviews, so it's their gig, it's not exactly interview, it's kind of gig, acting, semi-scripted, improvised, right? But they all show, okay? So it's not reality TV. Even reality TV isn't 100% real, right? Everyone knows that. So, in their interviews, okay, they make a lot of kind of sexual jokes, okay? <laughs> it was funny. And some other jokes. Kind of political incorrect kind of jokes, okay? So, so I kind of fan took the liberty of fantasizing myself to be invited as an interviewee. So who are those interviewees? It seems like Sometimes famous people, as famous as Matt Damon, right? But all others, probably like their colleagues. So back in 2010, uh, it was before Miss Mel Melana got that 2013, I think, 2015, the AT&T commercial. So they were doing this YouTube before that. Okay, so she just took, the, took some audition with AT&T and she got selected in the audi audition, okay. But before that audition, yeah, she was doing this YouTube video series. And um, the people that they invite as interviewees seem to be kind of low level, Los Angeles actors, actresses, writers, producers, kind of low level, not very, very famous, high celebrity, but kind of low, about lower middle level, actors, actresses, writers, directors, some entertainers in Los Angeles. That, that's what I took from watching those, okay? So, Basically, they make fun of them, okay? One by one, or sometimes two or three, they invite them and then... But interview is very short, like, typically like four, three, two minutes, right? Four minutes, whatever, for whatever reason. So I, I took the liberty to fantasize about me being invited. Huh? <laughs> In the interview. So yeah, let's do that. I mean, I can only imagine because I, I'm not in Los Angeles and also even if I was. So they're kind of lower middle level actor, entertainers, okay? When I was in Los Angeles, I was like rock bottom. I was like way down there, okay? So 
Even if I was in Los Angeles, I would not have been invited at all. Okay. So, for, yeah, I can only fantasize, right? So, so if they invite me to the interview, yeah, they, they stop making their production anyway, YouTube production, as far as I know, okay? But they, they kind of become famous later on, okay? Well, great, good for them. Congratulations. So I can only imagine if two young, beautiful ladies invite me to an interview, And let's say Ms. Melana would ask me a question like, Hey, do you think I'm, I'm fat? And I would say, uh, No, I think you're very attractive, attractive plump. Oh, that's like saying I'm fat, but you don't want to hurt my feelings. Yeah, that's one way to think about it. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah. They, they were like that, okay? I'm not making this. Well, I'm I kind of making this up, but some of the questions they ask their interviewees, it's like that, okay? It's about body weight, whatever, like appearance. Yeah. They did run very good shows there, okay? So. <sighs> Yeah. And they are just YouTube gigs, like tens of thousands of viewers. I mean, like 40,000 views, right? Where, first of all, it's very well produced. The serious production, acting, okay? Comedy gig. And then. To, like professional cameraman, editors, right? Lighting, sound, props, right? They're very well dressed. And that very t attractive two young women. A lot of male viewers, right? And I came to think about this YouTube series, Humanology series. Single guy, right? And it's not rehearsed or scripted or anything. Yeah, I mean, they do some improvisation too, but yeah, here is 100% improvisation and it's not exactly comedy acting, but it's, it's more about political commentary, commentary and science, physics, mathematics, philosophy, not very popular topic of the day. But hey, thank you for watching. And thank you for spending time with me because uh, it means the world to me. That somebody's watching this, okay? And uh, you're like my parents. Maybe you are. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes my parents watch this, okay? Thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah. We'll take five minutes break, okay, so. Yeah.
So the last paper, the fourth paper, I would say fourth paper of the year because I started writing since August. I mean, yeah, August like twentieth, two days after the my election loss, election defeat. So I, it's been what three months by now. That's a quarter, right? Quarter of a year. Yeah, so we wrote four papers for three months. More than one paper per month. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, we, are, we, we keep cranking out all these academic papers. We've got a lot, a lot to write. So this last paper we wrote, Metaphysics paper, it, that's um, already out there in the internet, online database, so that people can freely download. And one journal rejected it. It didn't take them long to reject it. Okay. I guess I spent about 40 hours to write this paper, 52 pages. And it took them about four hours to reject it. Okay. They came back to me very fast. About 10 hours, four hours later, they said, No! They were, quite, they were kind and civil in this rejection email, but I was offended. Okay. Why? I guess I thought well, I really like this paper. For some reason, okay. So I submit to another journal. Let me see. I haven't heard from them yet. Maybe I'll never hear from them, or maybe they'll reject. Most likely they will reject. Okay. But just one more submission to a journal. That's it. I'm not gonna submit this metaphysics paper anymore okay just one more chance that i'm giving them okay because i think this is very good paper with good content good quality high quality although i don't follow their formatting guideline i use like emoticons like slash slash colon hyphen close parenthesis sideways smiley okay yeah, in the paper, I use them very frequently. Sometimes I even wink, like exclamation mark. Okay. So. And I just throw a lot of jokes in the paper too. <laughs> yeah, it's very unconventional kind of research, academic research paper, but it got some serious content in there. Good, good, high quality content. So the fourth journal, who rejected my paper, I think they made a mistake, right? For the record, I submitted it so that descendants, our metaphysical descendants would know. Can you imagine how dumb these people are? Rejecting this kind of paper, what, it took didn't take them very long, like four hours, five hours, ten hours, okay. Being mistake, okay, so. But we forgive and forget. Why? Yeah, we all make mistakes. All right, so. Understood. We understand them. Not very smart, okay. We understand they're busy. Editors, academic journal editors, they're busy. They're mostly professors somewhere in some universities. Oh. You know, I know. Yeah, I've been to PhD program. They're busy. Their mothers, fathers. Their homework is to pay. Pets, kids, spouses to feed. Students to teach. PhD students to take care of. And they have to write for governmental grants. Grant application and teach 
they themselves write papers. Oh, they're busy. Editors of some academic journals. Very busy. They have to read all the submitted papers. Say automatic rejection, you know. No, no. Yeah, they had to do so. We understand. We don't blame them a single bit. Okay. We just understand. And yeah. But yeah, hard feelings. Or maybe for a, about a day or several hours. My feelings got hurt. I was uh, hugely offended. For a couple of hours. But then it went away. Okay, so. Yeah, now, yeah, forgive and forget. No problem. Yeah. That's about it. I mean, I. Today, we may just wrap it up soon. Why? I just don't have much to say today. Some social media, give me one second, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's like seven thirty right now, and um, I thought of maybe I, uh, today I might out brainstorm for the next paper. That's what I thought. But I'm kind of not in the mood. Why? Because last Sunday I finished writing this 52 page paper and submitted it. Okay. And um, so I want to take a break from all this writing or even thinking about those things. All right. So what would I do after this episode? Maybe I'll just go to bed and it's, yeah, it's 7 30, so maybe I'll just read some books. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, some social messaging. Okay, I'm sorry. Then we'll take a five minutes break and we'll, we'll see if there's anything more to talk about. Okay.
Okay. Alright, we'll take five minutes. So. Uh. Uh. So, I'm sorry, I keep talking about this Miss Milana. I think she's a rising star, I, I, I hope she gets more and more roles, big film roles. I wish her best for acting career. She got good talents and good looks, right? And so, yeah, she, I mean, it was on the, in the news, actually, okay? So she, Basically, maybe some social media, she, a lot of social media followers, followers made a lot of kind of rude comments about her looks or even like some sexual jokes on her. So she, she posted uh, some kind of uh, selfie video I don't know, some social media, uh, that she kind of complained about that, okay? But the way I can analyze the situation is this, okay? So, she's kind of getting the taste of a whole medicine. Why? Because in her talk shows, she made fun of, fun of a lot of guests, okay? So, it, it was kind of predatory a little bit, okay? I mean, that's fine because it's comedy gig, it's all kind of quasi-scripted, okay? Uh, but she made fun of a lot of people there in her shows, okay? So now people are making fun of her, okay? So it's like, yeah, that's one way to look at it, okay? But if you become a famous person, that's just... Hey, welcome to celebrate your good. If I ever become famous, and if people post on social media making fun of me, what would I do? I wouldn't look at it. Why? Well, first of all, if I'm famous, I'll be, I'll be busy, right? Second of all, I don't want to get my feelings get hurt. I don't want to get my feelings hurt, so I, I wouldn't look at it. 
That's what people do. I mean, that's what I do too. Making fun of celebrities. <laughs> it's like this, okay? Let's say President Trump is this big, gigantic dinosaur. So he got a lot of blood, right? Celebrate big, gigantic, this Leviathanic celebrity. Yeah, there's some like in national inquirers, whatever this, uh, the tabloid magazines making some fun of celebrities and regular people like us. Yeah, we make jokes about celebrities. Be it VP Biden and President elect Biden or President Trump. Yeah, we make fun of that. That's what people do. It's like, yeah, you have a big dinosaur, okay? There are a lot of bugs attached to them. Mosquitoes or ticks, parasites. Because they got a lot. Huh? Yeah, this analogy, kind of human analytical way. Copy and transfer, okay? So. Yeah, so welcome to Celebrity Hood. That's what it involves because to be a celebrity, people make jokes about that. That's nothing new. No, every celebrity goes through that kind of things because no matter who, what celebrity this person may be, there are people who don't like them. And even people who like them sometimes want to make fun of them. I like President Trump. But I make fun of them, fun of him all the time. Huh? It's just the way it is. Being a celebrity, yeah. They become ta target of jokes and sarcasm and whatnot. It, it's been always that way, okay? So. I'm sure you should get used to it. Yeah. I remember reading about Lindsay Lohan when she was the number one Hollywood actress, okay. She said she, do, she did not enjoy getting outside of her apartment or condominium, her house. I guess she didn't enjoy getting recognized. Recognized. She's a huge celebrity, right? So if, if she goes to grocery shop or shopping mall, or walking down the street, people would recognize her. I guess she didn't quite enjoy that. I've heard that from another person, uh, actor, famous, McCagney or whatever. No, not the X5 guy, not that guy, another actor. He was in this movie, uh, something like Lincoln Lawyer or something like that. Okay. So, or some other movies back in 1990s. I don't remember his name. Okay. Yeah, he's, he said, yeah, I, I like being a stranger, so... Yeah, I, I guess celebrities don't quite enjoy all these attentions once they become celebrities. But I'm sure when they were not celebrities, I'm sure they wanted that kind of attention, but once they get it, a lot of attention and fame, maybe they enjoy it for a while, but later on they can kind of get fed up with it. So it starts bothering them, maybe. Like Frank Sinatra. I read that uh, he did not like people asking him for autographs. Okay. Because maybe he got fed up with it, okay? I'm sure he enjoyed that first, right? Yeah, celebrities, they are famous because they wanted to be famous and they wanted a lot of attention. But once they get it, I guess they get fed up with it at some point. Tired of it, right? Hmm? So this McCagney or whatever guy, actor guy, he said, yeah, there's some price to pay, but I'm willing to pay the price of, you know, being recognized on the street 
Yeah, it's kind of energy consuming. I'm paraphrasing him, okay? But yeah, given the all this opportunity that comes with this fame, oh yeah, I think it's a good thing. He said something like that, okay? Well, I have been local celebrities, okay, when I was in law school, when I was in the U.S. Army, and yeah, when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, college, and um, but not Los Angeles, California. Why? L.A. is a big town, okay, but some other smaller towns, or oh, when I was in the U.S. Army, yeah. And even here, because I ran for local election, okay? Yeah, kind of local celebrity, okay? Well, so sometimes when I was in the U.S. Army or Madison, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, Michigan, or here, okay? Yeah, sometimes people recognize me. And I, I love that. I, I'm very grateful that, I, that, that, that they recognize me. I'm like... I'll bow down on the ground to them, on my knees on the ground, to thank them for recognizing me. And I love attention. Yeah, I want to be famous. I have always tried to be famous. I still am. I love attention. Yeah. So, I mean, some psychoanalysts would say, Oh, it's because you didn't get enough attention when, as you grow up as a child. I don't think so. I, my, my parents loved me. Of, of course, they worked, both worked. Okay. But yeah, I, I got attention from my f parents. My, I had many friends. My parents' friends. My grandparents. I got more than enough attention. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, you can go either way, right? Maybe I'm used to a lot of attention, huh? Maybe that's why I still want it. Maybe. So yeah, you can go either way, psychoanalysis, okay? Yeah, maybe in your childhood, you didn't get enough attention. That's why you crave attention now. Or you had a lot of attention in your childhood. That's why you still want it because you're used to it, right? So yeah, that kind of, that line of thinking, the psychoanalysis method, like kind of reductionism, back to ev trying to explain everything based on childhood experience, it doesn't quite work, in my opinion. Okay, it's, it's too much like this connecting the dots. It's more like narrative manufacturing. It's not quite logical. It's just more like narrative. It's more like literature as opposed to science and logic. Okay, it's kind of like plausible, plausibility, but that's not science, that's art, that's more like literature. And psychoanalysis, like Sigmund Freudian, it kind of goes like that. Not scientific, not logical, but more, but more about literature, novelistic, this narrative, this connecting the dots, all right, more about plot, Plausibility, kind of. Huh? Yeah, that's what I think. But psychology is a big field, so there's some good results that they have. Yeah, I appreciate psychology. Yeah, but in human analogy, yeah, we, we take different methodology. And um, so the next paper, yeah, you probably, I, I submit to fill some philosophy journal as opposed to psychology. Why? Because there's too much metaphysics in there. So, yeah. I submit to uh, some philosophy journal, okay. Most likely they rejected, rejected, that's fine. I just want to say hello. Just for the record, I tried, right? Yeah. Because I take that as my mission, okay. At least I should give it a try. Summit to a journal, academic journal.
at least try, right? We'll take five minutes break, okay? Yeah, you may continue actually, huh? Not sure. No problem. Yeah. No. Okay, we're back, and um, yeah, <laughs> so, well, Thanksgiving is coming, so these radio talk shows, conservative channels, they are all about this criticizing state governors, mandatory order, no more than 10 people gathering during this Thanksgiving. <laughs> Personally, I have no problem with it. Why? My family members, they are in Korea. Okay? So yeah, Thanksgiving, yeah, most likely I'll be here by myself doing human art series or writing paper. So Thanksgiving is like next week, I guess. Something like that, okay? So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so yeah, COVID-19, yeah, we talked enough about that, so yeah. Then what else? Yeah, I mean, during my lunch time, it was like 8 degrees outside, something like that, okay. So, yeah, I ran, no problem. Yeah, I take this blazer off and put my coat on, so my shirt, Hawaiian t-shirt and this coat, and then I start running, okay, in the park. And after running, I kind of get hot. Well, I don't sweat. You see, eight degrees outside. Okay, so but I get hot, so I take off the coat, right? Then I come to this wonderful newly installed this uh, pull-up bars. 
I do two reps, one like this and like backward, one frontward, okay. So it's quite high, so I have to jump, right? And I do like about 10 each, 10 reps twice, 10 rounds of, two rounds of 10 reps, okay. And then I get hot and I take off this long sleeve shirt. Actually, I take off long sleeve shirt before I do the pull-ups. Okay, and then I run back to my parking lot just wearing Hawaiian t-shirt because I get hot. Right. Yeah. In Alaska in winter. Yeah. Yeah, I do exercise. So yesterday I did this Facebook Live, Human Allergy Extension, okay, and uh, I did some martial arts there. Yeah, uh, belt style, some uh, nunchucks, and um, some dagger style, but daggers, yeah, I do have it, but I use chopsticks, metallic chopsticks instead. Why? <coughs> it may look too scary, okay, so I use metallic chopsticks, okay, instead of this Walmart steak knife, yeah, they're blunt, it doesn't cut at all, okay, blunt steak knife, but it still may look too scary, so I use this metallic chopsticks instead, okay, so yeah, I did some of that, some rod, you know, staff, okay, yeah, but nobody was watching it, okay? Oh, no problem, no problem, okay, so. Just imagining audience, to me, is good enough. But I'm very grateful people like you watching, spending time with me, okay? It means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cheers. Two hands cup holding, present Trump style. I like him. I like him a lot. <laughs> uh, these media people making fun of President Trump, they're hilarious. Great sense of humor, okay. I I'm gonna miss him. I think people will miss him. Even media people. Oh, they will miss him. They will continue to talk about him, okay. I don't think Pre President Trump will disappear from the public view after, what, January 20th? Yeah, yeah he will, of course, peaceful transition. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know what he's going to do next. So he been into TV shows, reality TV shows, so he got fed up with that. And he served the country for four years. Probably he's fed up with that too. So what What's next then? What would be more exciting than being a reality TV show host? President of the United States? What would be more possibly exciting than that? What would he do after he leave the White House? It'd be interesting to see that what he's going to do next. I mean, he ran business. Yeah, I've been there, done that, right? I don't know what he's going to do next. To be happy? I'm not concerned. Yeah, he's a mature kind of guy. Yeah. He got some good wisdom. He's decently wise. So I'm sure he'll find something to do, right? I mean, he said he will rerun year 2024. But I don't think he will get Republican Party support on that. I doubt it. Okay. Yeah. No clue. Yeah, some people say he's going to make a Trump news network. Maybe he'll do that, huh? Yeah, that'd be exciting. He become head of this journalist, journalism organization, Trump News Network. And so he will hire all the journalists who report 
alternative facts and Trumpian style. Maybe he enjoyed that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Many people say that that's what he's, he's going to do next. Come up with his own news t news channel. Oh, that'd be very interesting to watch. I would watch Trump's news network. Oh yeah, I, I would. I hope he does that actually. I think it would be very good news. Interest entertaining news network. Yeah. There we go. Dave Hilarious, yeah. I hope he does that, right? Yeah. Now Tr Mr. P former President Trump owns his own news channel, his own media. That'd be cool. I, I would watch his new shows. Yeah, absolutely. He know how to entertain. He got some amazing showmanship, right? To a fault. Point too much of it, okay. But hey, we cannot get enough entertainment, right? So, the more the better. Showmanship, yeah. I got some showmanship of my own, right? Yeah, I, I do entertain people, okay, so. Perhaps not enough, okay? Because not many people are watching this, okay? So, yeah. But the thing is, I'm a man. I'm an Asian man. I think I look decent sometimes, okay? But I'm male, and I'm 42. Some kind and generous people tell me, yeah, I look younger than my age. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, but uh, I'm a male, and here it's just me. There's nobody else. Props, whiteboard, pen, eraser, tripod, easel, you know, some lighting, and I look at this place. I mean, I'm sure jail rooms look better than this. I'm sure in jail room they have pictures hanging on the wall, maybe. I don't know, I've never been to there, okay. But <laughs> it's very bleak. I like it that way because I'm a minimalist. I don't need I don't want any distraction. So I don't hang pictures, paintings on the wall. No. I don't do that. I have some candlesticks and candle stands, but that's what my dad bought me when he came visit in some used school stores. And they are very good candle, very old school, beautiful candlesticks and some old school iron, just iron, right? Old school, not electric, but just piece of iron, iron, okay. Yeah, my dad bought it for me and it's in the kitchen in the, on the shelf as a decoration. But that's the other decoration I have. Yeah. And he bought me here in some used good stores. And that's a very good purchase. And I'm very grateful to my dad for buying those beautiful old school decorative merchandise for me. Yeah, yeah, there. I did display in the shelves and whatnot. Okay. The living room, kitchen, okay? Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, we'll take five minutes break, okay? All right. Okay.
Okay. So, um, can we talk about girls? Because in this human allergy extension yesterday in the Facebook Live, I talked about like some Korean girls that I used to hit on when I was early teen. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's cold. <sighs> so. Yeah, I've been to Los Angeles, California. Yeah, I tried to become an actor. Yeah, I've been to many auditions. All right, so yeah, I I, I have seen some of the most beautiful ladies in Los Angeles, California, like models, actresses. Okay, all different races. Okay, some of them mixed races: Middle Eastern, African American, Caucasian, Asian. Okay. Oh, they are like really beautiful young ladies. Okay, oh, they are like... Okay, so... Celebrities on TV, movie, you do get to see some of them. Very good-looking females. Very attractive young females, okay? You get to see some of them, okay? But I've seen better. <laughs> Not just in Los Angeles. In Korea, and different parts of America, in Europe, right? Yeah. I've seen more beautiful, attractive females than the kind of celebrities that we see on TVs and movies. I've seen better, okay, so. Even in Alaska, all right? So whenever I see these extraordinarily beautiful young ladies or whatever race they may have, I'm like, can you become an actress or model so that the rest of the world would benefit from your beauty? Sometimes I tell them exactly that. I'm not exactly word by word but in a more civilized way okay because they i understand i've been to hollywood it's not easy because look that in los angeles california there are a lot of them okay really beautiful young females all different races okay and there are only limited spots. So casting director's job is a very tough one, okay? And many of them are highly talented. They can sing, they can dance, great, fashionable, and they're young, they are beautiful, attractive females. Some of them can even write. Multiple talents, okay? There are so many of them. And there are limited spots, right? Because big film projects or TV shows, they cost a lot of money to make. All the background staffers, you have costume design, designers, prop designers, interior designers, you have hairstylists, cosmetic, you know, and um, costume designer, cosmetic, hairstylists, and acting coaches, writers, directors, producers, studio executives, camera crews, lighting, sound, computer editing. Big projects, right? I've never been involved in a big project like that, but more smaller projects I have been involved with. A lot of people, okay, so even small projects, okay, so. Yeah. So yeah, very limited spots there, okay. Highly competitive. Cool. I'm sure it's the same way in South Korea too, K-pop, right? Some people, <laughs> Interesting. 
Some foreigners even come to South Korea to be part of that K-pop, okay? I've seen that, okay, so... Just like people come to Los Angeles, California, all of, from all over the world to become Hollywood movie star, right? I was one of them, okay? <clears throat> yeah. And some of my childhood acquaintances, not friends, but not, yeah, some, not childhood, but teenagehood acquaintances in the town of Pampo. How many of them? About three of them. Well, one of them is PSI Sai, the Gangnam Star guy, right? And there are two others who made more moderate success in Korean entertainment business. Okay. And they are acquaintances. I don't know them very well, okay? But I guess we would like chat it a couple of times. Uh, because we are uh, around the same generation and uh, same age. Some of them younger than me, some of them older than me, okay? And come, we went to the same school and lived in the same town, kind of. Right, so. A small town, okay? Pampo. Lovely town, okay? So, yeah, I know three people who went to Korean entertainment business. Okay, one of them Psy, okay, and the other two lesser known, right? But with some moderate success. Okay. One of them is, I mean, Mr. Psy, he's like one year older than me, okay? And the other guy, he's like seven years older than me, okay? so. And the, the other, another guy, the, the other guy is like one year younger than me, okay? Uh, I know their names, their real Korean names, okay? Not stage names. I know their real names, but I'm not in liberty to tell you. Okay? It's their privacy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. In my childhood hometown of Pampo, I know three guys from Pampo or some adjacent towns in and about, okay? But who we went to the same schools in town that I did, okay? Yeah, I know three of them got kind of some kind of some degree of success in Korean entertainment business, all right? So. Hey, I tried to make I tried to make it big in Hollywood. Didn't work out. Why well, a good time there? And I made ended up made, making my own movie. Okay, therapy my which is in YouTube. Okay, yeah. So I I was very happy with the result. I mean, it didn't become commercial success or anything, but it made me very happy finishing it putting it out there, publishing it on YouTube, okay. Yeah. yeah, these papers, not sure if it will ever be rediscovered, maybe during my lifetime or after I'm dead. I hope it does get some mainstream attention one day. Why? Because they are good papers, okay, in my opinion at least. And some kind and generous friends of mine read read some parts of those papers and I got some good feedbacks, okay, so. It may happen one day. Yeah, I'm trying. At least it's a good hobby, keep me out of trouble, it keeps my mind sharp, right? So, it's a good hobby. So I was watching this, some of the interviews that 
this means uh, Milana did. She went to Comic Con, like comic book conference, and there were these photo ops, right? <clears throat> this. Young females or middle-aged females, very great shape, no tattoos, right? Like fancy dress, posing for the photos and whatnot, right? I don't quite recognize who they are. <laughs> but I guess they are kind of like middle level in Hollywood, whatever, right? Never seen them before, but they look great, they great shape, whatever. Yeah, they're like millionaires for whatever reasons. Ah, they're beautiful ladies, okay? Yeah, middle age, younger age, whatever, okay? It's, it's very beautiful. Fashionable and whatnot, whatnot. All that stuff, okay? We'll, we'll take five minutes break, okay? So, yeah, we'll talk about fame, celebrity wood, whatever, okay? Kind of fantas fantasization kind of. Of course, not everybody want to be famous, but I'm one of those people who crave attention and fame. I'm just one of them, okay? I don't know about you, okay? Yeah, not everybody want to be famous, but some people do. We'll take five minutes, okay? Fame, yeah. Okay, so, fame, yeah, the David Bowie song, right? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so Los Angeles, California was nice at first. I lived there for three years. I even enjoyed traffic jam. It was something very new, relatively, 
Okay. Before Los Angeles, California, I was in Ithaca, New York. No traffic jam. Okay. Small town, college town, Canada. Okay. But in Los Angeles, California, there's huge traffic jam in the highway. I enjoyed that experience actually at first. It was something quite new. Of course, I grew up in South South Korea, a big town, big city, traffic jam. I didn't like it. Yeah. But it's been a long time since I experienced tra traffic jam. Yeah, Madison, Wisconsin, no traffic jam. Ithaca, New York, none. Okay, so. Then I came to Los Angeles, California to become an actor, experience traffic jam. Ooh, this is cool. You know? Something new. I mean, long forgotten. Yeah. Then I got a computer program job and I did some acting. You know, like small ones, like student projects, community theaters. I enjoy that. Uh, yeah. Auditions, okay, memorizing lines, monologues, craft. What is craft? Yeah, this acting, this gesture. Woo! <laughs> kind of stuff. They call it craft. Yeah. The gestural positioning, acting, right? They call it craft. Okay, so yeah, like facial expression, like <laughs> acting is fun. It's very therapeutic, actually. Okay, yeah, some psychotherapy involves acting, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's that's great. Okay, so yeah, so. Acting, yeah, acting is very therapeutic activity and uh, highly encouraged, encouraged hobby or acting. I, in, it is human that see sometimes we do acting, right? Yeah, it's entertaining, cathartic, right? Very therapeutic. So, uh, but after three years, I mean, okay, I guess I was in to this acting activity about for a year, going to auditions and stuff, student film projects, community theater. I did that for a year, right? Second year, after one year of acting, you know, trying to get agents and whatnot, okay, taking auditions, I got fed up, okay. I was not satisfied, okay. I wasn't quite making it, okay, so after one year, because patience is not my virtue, okay, I don't like waiting around, right, so, after one year, I started making my own movie, with therapy for metaphor, yeah. I did, well, <coughs> I did all the principal shooting, filming, okay, in Mojave Desert, so it's all done, and I did some editing, but after that, I got even fed up with making this movie too. So I put in the storage and I moved to San Jose, California and joined the U.S. Army. Okay, why? Because I needed some brain break, okay? Because computer programming, a lot of brain work, okay? So I wanted to do more brawn in the U.S. Army junior enlisted, okay? Later on, yeah, I was Station in Fort Hood, Texas. I love that base. Clean base, okay. And then uh, one day I decided to finish this movie, so I drove to California storage unit and took all my filming equipment back to Fort Hood, Texas, and I finished the editing. And then submitted to 50 different film festivals, and then we deployed to Afghanistan. Okay. Very romantic, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm telling this story again and again, okay, but uh, yeah. yeah, so acting was fun, but after that, after a year, had enough of that, and then filmmaking was fun, but after a year, had enough of that, and third year, I focused on my computer programming job, yeah, I became a project manager, right, small company, okay, software. Yeah, yeah, mostly like human resources kind of software, okay. 
Yes, yeah, so all the uh, just comfortable programming career. Okay. Then I left to Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, Los Angeles, beautiful town, but after living three years, it's like, yeah, been there, done that, you know, yeah, I don't want this town anymore. It's too hard to drive, so I started having constipation too, okay, so, yeah, I had to go where it's less hot and less dry, and there was San Jose, California. I was there for like three months before I joined the US Army, okay, because I was kind of like, should I get a comfortable program job in the Silicon Valley? Or should I go to law school? Because I was applying to some programmer jobs, Silicon Valley. And also I was studying for LSAT, law school audition test. And, but I decided to join the US Army instead. Okay. Yeah. To get some exercise, okay, yeah. I mean, oh, the whole time I've been exercising, you know, in Los Angeles, California, I did running, jogging, weightlifting, hiking. Yeah, yeah, it's Santa Monica Beach. Yeah, I run on the Sandy Beach too, okay. Hmm? Yeah, I've been exercising all the time. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, hey, people who are overweight or even obese, they look great. It's just that I recommend them diet and exercise for their health. All right. They look all great. They're all beautiful. All right. But for their health reasons, we recommend diet and exercise. That's all. They all look great. They're all beautiful. All right? It's different kind of beauty, okay? So, Yeah, and uh, what else? Fame. Let's fantasize, okay? If I may, okay. If I become famous, I keep writing these papers after papers, and I keep running for some political positions, offices every two years, okay? It may take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or it may never happen in my lifetime. The two-pronged approach, politics and academia. Yeah, I keep writing papers, I keep running for offices, because I want to be famous. As a politician or as a, as a scholar, right? I'm one of those people, okay, yeah. Attention seeker, okay, so. <sighs> so if, if it does happen in my lifetime, great. If it happens, yeah, I, I plan to live long, okay. I don't know how long will I live, but maybe I live up to some 90s or even over 100, because I do diet and exercise. Yeah, I do smoke cigarettes, I drink alcohol, so what? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll live up, in, up to my 90s or some 100 some years, I don't know, okay? So it may have, the fame may happen in my lifetime or not. It'd be nice if it happens in my lifetime. What if it happens posthumously or even not at all? Well, for the benefit of humanity, future generation, I hope and pray that people read these papers because they, I think they have very good content, good substance. Okay, I think it's very beneficial for the sake of humanity and for our descendants, okay? So it, I hope it happens, one way or another, okay? In my lifetime or posthumously, whatever, okay?
So in this pap last paper I wrote in this narrative, the final finale screenplay. <sighs> yeah, this would what woodpecker named Mr. Socrates asking me. Okay. Maybe I ask them for, ask him for first, okay. Hey! Two versions of heavens. Paradise, afterlife. One version of heaven full of women. Second version full of books. Which one do you prefer? And I was like, you know what? I'll be fine with the second version, heaven full of books. As long as I have cigarettes, lighters, whiskeys, vodkas, and yeah, or laptop computer and internet with the internet connection, then I'd be okay with heaven full of books. <laughs> That's what I wrote, okay? So. I mean, because first version of Paradise Full of Women Probably I, I will enjoy for the first few months I'm the only guy in this paradise And This paradise full of ladies 18 and above, okay all ages, 18 and above, okay, all beautiful ladies, and they're all straight. I'm the only guy. I will enjoy the maybe first couple of months, I guess, and after that, probably I get jaded and... So this paradise, paradisical experience won't last more than a couple of months, that will be my guess, right? But if I'm with library and computer with internet connection, I, I I can visit adult websites, right, to get it out. But if this heaven is full of books, more long-term happiness, right? Yeah. And in this heaven, I said, I, I wrote, I'd be okay with this second version if I have whiskey and vodka and cigarettes. Internet, okay, so... But that's kind of... world that I'm living in right now. So, yeah, this could, this could be heaven. This could be paradise. I mean, there was this song, Brian Adams, and later on, remade by this beautiful blonde lady. Right? Yeah. We are in heaven. Yeah. I have no complaints. Yeah. I have many books in my house and you, you, nowadays you don't even need books. If you have a cell phone with the internet connection, all the knowledge is available online. In your hand. Cell phone, internet, right? Knowledge is free nowadays. So. Yeah, I have my whiskey, vodka, cigarettes, my house, my car, my job, my friends, like you. I'm, I'm a happy camper. Yeah. I'm very much blessed. No complaints. Fame, it'd be nice for a change, right? But famous people, they say, yeah, they don't like being famous after a while, after they become famous. <laughs> they don't like yeah, I'm sure at first they enjoy the attention because that's what they wanted. That's why they wanted to be famous to get a lot of attention. But after a while, you know, they kind of get jaded, fed up with all the attention, and yeah. So maybe the pleasure of being famous doesn't last very long, right? Some actors, some entertainers, celebrities in Hollywood, they go back to school, like Shakira, and even some male actor, I don't remember his name, I, I think he was in Robocop, the Robocop actor. He was in TV show 24, okay, 
And he went back to school in a PhD program in history or philosophy, something like that. And he got it. He got PhD. Okay. Smart man. Okay. I love his acting. He was in 24 TV show. All right. Great actor. He's one of my favorites. Okay. But I don't remember his name. Great actor. Great actor. Good acting. He's kind of old school. By now, maybe he's in his 60s, 70s, something like that. Okay. So. Great actor, okay, so. Yeah. He got his PhD, okay. He was a big star in Hollywood and went back to school in a PhD program and he got it, right? That's fantastic, all right? Yeah, Shakira, she went back to school too, okay. That's what, what Marilyn Monroe should have done. Okay, but she got jaded and fed up with all this fame, whatever, acting, right? She should have gone back to school, right? Yeah. That's what I would do if I ever become famous and get fed up with the fame and all. If I'm famous, and I'm fed up with fame, I must, by then, I must have made a lot of money. So I can go to school, pay the tuition, right? Maybe some graduate school, whatever, right? Maybe MBA, right? That's what I would do. Or maybe I st start making some video art, like Mr. Namjoon Pak style, okay? Yeah, I understand electronics. I used to be electrician for helicopters, okay. So yeah, I understand the electronics. Yeah, I can learn some more of that, wiring and just whatever. Yeah. So just like Mr. Jesus Christ said, yeah, we have to be reborn, transform ourselves. Because after a while, yeah, you kind of get fed up, jaded, boring, right? After you do something. I mean, not everybody's like that, but I'm one of those kind, kind of nomadic, metaphysical nomad, nomadic personality, okay? Yeah. We'll take five minutes break, okay? And we'll talk about this nomadic personality, nomadic lifestyle, okay? We'll take five minutes. Yeah. I love that vodka, man. Blueberry vodka, Alaskan blueberry vodka. It's good. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's take five minutes.
Okay. So, let's, if I may, let's continue to fantasize about fame. If I become famous and make a lot of money, do you know what I would do? I may open up a business, like production company in Alaska. Because in Alaska, we have very many talented individuals and very many beautiful people. Okay, so I will hire all the Alaskan talents, beautiful people, men and women, all different races and ages, and start making some TV shows or movies. That's what I would do if I become famous and make a lot of money. Okay. That's what I would do. So, let's get back to this, this observation of the Ms. Milana Vine Troupe, okay? Yeah, she, she's very charming, she's a good actress, okay, and good writer. I can tell, yeah, she got, she's a very smart lady, okay, so, also very beautiful too. But, when it comes to education, she doesn't have this intellectual depth. Right, so her skits, gigs, this YouTube series, whatever, sometimes it kind of get boring. Right, I mean, human beauty it only goes so far. They say beauty is skin deep. Well, actually, in human analogy, beauty is more than skin deep. Okay, it's about personality, charm, being nice and being smart, being funny. Yeah, beauty is not skin deep. You know, it's, you go way more than that. It's about discipline, diet, exercise, and whatnot, okay. Yeah, beauty is not, <laughs> no, it's not skin deep, no. That's gross understatement, okay. It goes way deeper than that, right? Anyways, so, but we are very well educated. Okay, we know philosophy, science, religion, politics, mathematics even, okay? We know a lot of stuff. So when we make movies, it can have some intellectual profoundness, depth, some seriousness, all right? So if we write a movie, make a movie, it won't, it won't be just funny. It will be very instructive and educational and pedagogical, right? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I keep writing papers until I become famous. After I become famous, after I make a lot of money, most likely I start making movies, TV shows, okay? Or maybe YouTube series, whatever, internet, social media, whatever. Yeah, probably I'll open up a production company to make movies, TV shows, right? Yeah. It'd be nice if, if it happens, okay, so. Because by then, I would have written, we would have written, we will have written probably 100 papers because, look, on average, we make we write more than one paper per month. Ten years, we will have written more than 100 papers in ten years. My guess, it will be quite likely that I become famous in ten years because I keep on writing. And we have a lot to write, okay? But this is an important point, okay? If I ever become famous, it will largely thanks to you. But I cannot promise you to give you anything back. It's very important, okay? Why? Because you have a job, right? And you're my friend, right? That does not mean you and I can work together very well. Okay? And if I hire you, if our business partnership does not work very well, then you will try to get back to your old job and they already hire somebody else. So 
you just lost your job. By hiring you, I did you some harm, caused you some harm. You lost a job. And our business partnership did not work. Okay? Because two friends, they can be very good friends, okay? But when it comes to business, it's not always guaranteed that this business partnership between two friends will work very well. Because they're two different things. Okay? So, yeah, nepotism sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Cronism, okay? If I hire somebody, if I open a production company, I'll just put it in the cracks list or monster.com, indeed.com, okay? To hire somebody who doesn't have any job at that time. Okay, if somebody will have a job and try to switch their career or occupation, well, it's on them, okay, why? Even if it doesn't work out. Why? But they apply to this job. Okay? But would I hire my friends? Most likely not. Why? Well, there's cronism, nepotism, and also if, if this business partnership does not work out, then I deprive you of your job. I don't want to cause any harm like that to my friends that I love. I love you as a friend. Okay? I don't want to take away your job. Alright? This is very important, okay? So, yeah. So yes, you are on your own, okay? I am tremendously grateful to you and I pray to God that you have God's blessings for generations to come. Okay. Give me five minutes. <laughs> My voice is running out. You we'll take five minutes, very okay. God bless you for generations to come. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, <coughs> we'll take five minutes. <coughs>
So, yeah, let's talk about back. Get back to this Miss uh, Milana Vine through. I mean, yeah, she got college education. She went to what University of California, San Diego, in La Jolla, California. It's a very good school, okay? So she majored in like communication arts or journalism or whatever, right? Yeah, and she's college grad, I think. Okay, so she, I guess, yeah, she got some education. College education, okay. So she quoted from like something like Martin Luther King Jr. or some, someone, I don't know. Yeah, the lack of talent can be compensated by Perseverance. She she did say quote that okay in some interview. Very well, smart. I don't know. But she got talents. So she, she has no lack of talents. Okay, but she was persistent and persevered. Yeah, auditions and and she made it. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, very inspiring, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I keep trying. I mean, in 10 years, we are kind of writing these papers together, okay? So, yeah, we'll have written 100 papers in 10 years by the sheer volume, and we got talents, right? We know a lot. We're just sharing. Because writing a paper that's low budget, it just takes time and thinking efforts. Doesn't take, cost any money whatsoever, right? Yeah, when I write, I drink whiskey. So for whiskey, I always buy the cheapest, right? Cigarettes, vodka, right? Doesn't cost that much money. Yeah, I I don't have too much time. I'm a lawyer, all right. But weekday nights, weekends, yeah, I can keep on writing. It doesn't take too much time. Unlike filmmaking, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so writing papers is a lot easier than making a film, right? Yeah, when we brainstorm, we grab whiteboard, pen, eraser, easel, tripod, right? Yeah. It doesn't cost too much time, too much money to write a paper. Okay, so. Yeah, that's the only thing I can afford to do for now, okay? But if I become famous in 10 years, all right, largely thanks to you. So you're like, just like my parents. I cannot repay you for your kindness and generousness. But high and almighty God, he's my guarantor. When I cannot pay you, my debt to you, owe to you. High and Almighty God will pay you with eternal blessings, generations after generations to come. He's my guarantor, God. I'm Christian, right? He will pay you. And you have God's eternal blessings, generations after to come. That's better than money or new job, okay? God will compensate you more than fully with handsome interest. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> That's the best I can give you. Okay. My prayer for you. Cheers. Yeah. So, let's fantasize, okay? Yeah, I mean, we have talents and we have perseverance, so I think in 10 years, I might get the fame, okay, because by then, in 10 years, 100 papers, research, academic research articles, by the sheer volume of it in all different subjects like religion, ideology, sociology, psychology, humanology, economics, mathematics, okay, maybe by then I will learn, I will have learned LaTeX, LaTeX by Stanford professor, computer science department, Donald Knuth, okay, not Donald Trump, but Donald Knuth, professor Knuth, okay, maybe I learned that, 
to express this very complex mathematical equations. Okay. If I run out of subjects, other subjects other than mathematics, you know, if I've already published economics, humanology, metaphysics, if I run out of topics to talk about, yeah, then, then I will start writing about mathematics because we discovered a lot, right? And if I have to publish mathematics paper, I will have to learn LaTeX because those equations that we have discovered, they are very complex equations. Looks like a tank. A lot of subparts, this big gigantic machinery looks looking like a factory. There's no other way, okay? I have to learn LaTeX, right? No problem. I'm a former computer programmer, yeah. LaTeX, yes, yeah, markup language, just like HTML. Hypertext markup language, okay, so. Yeah, I, I, I will not have any problem learning it. I already know some, okay, so. So yeah, in 10 years, 100 research, academic research papers by then, by the sheer volume, okay. And in 10 years, I will have run for political offices, public offices, five times, okay. So yeah, I will get more and more known in 10 years. So I'll be 52 by then, in 10 years. Yeah, I may become famous. Yeah. I mean, of course, I'm in social media, okay, so, yeah, I add, add more and more friends, okay, so, I don't know if Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever, the social media, do they have upper limit of friends? I don't know. Maybe if, even if they have it, maybe they'll increase the maximum friends level. How many friends they would allow in social media? I don't know. Yeah. But breaking up this big corporation, social network, I don't think it's a good idea, okay? Because concentration of capital, that's capitalism, okay? Private property concept. And they are, yeah, they're good and bad, okay? But I don't think it's a good idea to break them apart, okay? Because concentration of capital is a good thing, okay? In my opinion, okay? Because YouTube, back in the days, was a small company. You had 10 minute max uploading, okay? When Google purchased YouTube, merger and acquisition, I mean, okay? It's like no limit or three hour limit, okay? Because they have huge concentration of capital. You can pay for it, right? Great, that's great. Anyways, what time is it? Nine. So earlier today, yeah, I had dinner. What's my dinner? If you want, yeah. Please take a guess, okay. Hint? Something very healthy, okay, so. We'll take five minutes, okay. Yeah. Make it some vodka. Protein shake bottle. I don't take protein shakes. I used to, okay. Nowadays, I just put some Alaskan blueberries and vodka in there. So. I don't even shake it, okay? We'll take five minutes. Oh.
All right. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about this. We have to. Okay. So, Mr. President Trump, he hired United States Senator from Arkansas or Alabama, some southern state. Okay, I don't remember his name. Okay, he hired that U.S. Senator from some southern state of America as a, his attorney general. But he recused himself in this Russian investigation, okay? And President Trump fired him. So he went back to his state. He ran for United States Senate seat again, and he lost the election, okay? And journalists say his political career is over, okay? So that's like <sighs> kind of sad. I don't want that happen to you, okay? Because friendship does not always translate to partnership, business partnership, okay? You and I may be very good friends, but it does not mean, or not necessarily mean, we can be very good business partners. Because it's two totally different worlds. Friendship, business partnership, they are not the same. It doesn't always translate very well okay and as a loving friend of yours i don't want that to ha happen to you okay i don't want to take away your job All right so most likely if i ever become famous i'm not going to offer you any jobs okay because i don't want to take away the job career that you already have Okay? This is important. Right? So, yes, you have to take care of yourself, your career. Right? And I'm very eternally grateful because you're just like my parents. I honor you as my parental figures. You take care of me, you love me, just like my parents. Okay? But you have to take care of yourself though. Your career. Your life. Your happiness. Okay, even if I be, ever become famous, largely thanks to you. Well, I pray for you. God will repay you. All right, because I cannot possibly repay the debt I owe to you. God is my guarantor. He will pay you. Okay, and God, He has infinite blessings in store for you. Okay. So, that's all I can do. I can only pray for you and your kids, your grandkids, your future generations. In Jesus' name, okay? Trust you. Thank you. Yeah. So in 10 years, I think probably more than likely that I become famous in 10 years. Why? Because I will, I will be riding by then, 10 years from now, 100 research, academic research papers. And you have very much big part of that, okay? So, the deal is this, okay? I share you, with you some of the things that I learned from other people, maybe from you, directly, indirectly, okay? And some of my own ideas with you. So, it's intellectual entertainment. Okay. I'm a male, Asian male. I'm not that young or... Sometimes I like the way I look, okay? Oh, Mira, 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 who is the most handsome? Hmm? Sometimes I, I kind of like the way I look, okay? But other times... <laughs> yeah, I was watching this Miss... Milena, so yeah, acting gig, yeah, kind of bring up this old, good old memories when I used to be an actor, okay, so. Acting is good, okay, it's art, it's cool, all right, so. Yeah, so like, you know, yeah. So it's intellectual entertainment, okay. That's what we have for you in this human rights series. You pay me with your time. Kind, kindness and generosity, right? And I pay you back with intellectual entertainment. 
right? We deal with physics, mathematics, philosophy, religion, politics, ideologies, right? So that's the done deal, right? I don't owe you anything and you don't owe me anything, okay? It's two-way transaction. You pay me with your time, kindness and generosity, and I pay you back with humanology, human knowledge. Last paper, I, yeah, I kind of hinted on that, human knowledge. I use that phrase many times. To hint that, okay, to prepare the readers for the next paper, okay. Maybe I should submit to psychology journal. I don't know. Maybe, just to say hello, okay. Because I'm kind of eager to say, yeah, psychology got some negative connotation, okay. We rather call it humanology. Yeah, I'm kind of inclined to submit to psychology journal the next paper, okay. Although it's very much about meta metaphysics and philosophy, okay. But it will deal with human emotion, okay, so, yeah, uh, we'll see. Yeah, maybe I'll first introduce this term, humanology, okay. I think I should, okay, yeah, I think it's a better idea to submit to psychology journal, okay, yeah. Yeah, most likely they'll reject it, flat out, maybe it take three minutes to reject it. No problem, yeah, they're busy. We understand. We have like 17 minutes left, okay. With this micro software or this camera software, yeah, three hour maximum per episode, fine. Yeah, this Miss Milana, great actor, okay, great actress. She does all this facial muscle expression. Very feminine, high pitched voice, beautiful voice. Very fashionable hairstyle, outfit, costume. Great sense of humor. Yeah, it is comedic timing, right? Yeah. Very smart. Yeah, yeah. And decent body figure. She's decent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's cool. And very smart, okay. She's Jewish, right? European Jewish. Not every Jews are very, very, very smart. She's one of those smart Jews, right? Very brainy and smart. And when she was younger, okay, yeah, she started acting when she was like five or five years old, not five o'clock, five years old, right? Yeah, she was in acting. She lived in Los Angeles, California, all her life in America, okay? <sighs> So but she finally made it after two decades or so, right? Congratulations, okay. But when she was younger, she kind of looked plain, okay? But as she aged and gained more experience, she became more attractive and smarter. So this beauty, it has to do with not just, it's not skin deep, okay? It has to do with some intelligence and smartness to experience, okay? Beauty is not skin deep. And in humanology, this version, okay, beauty is not to the eyes of beholders either. Beauty is something very objective, not subjective, right? Yeah, some people say beauty is to the eyes of beholders. Well, there's some excuse, right? Beauty is not subjective. No, it's very, very objective. Well, Biologically speaking, reproduction kind of. 
Yeah, be- some metaphysical beauty can be very subjective. Yeah, metaphysical level. Okay. Metaphysical beauty perception, aesthetic perception can be very subjective. But when it comes to physical level, more animalistic, visceral level, their production, uh, then it comes to objectivity. Hmm? We'll take five minutes break, okay? Before the last segment of this episode. Alright? Yeah, we we'll take five minutes to last segment and we call it a day. Call it live, okay? Thank you! Thank you! I love you, God bless you! <clears throat>
So we have like 15 minutes, uh, nine minutes left. That's good enough. Okay. So for tonight, yeah, let's talk about some lighter subjects, shall we? Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of crushes on ladies, okay, back in the days. But I still do. <laughs> I'm a man, straight man, okay, yeah. I've crushed on many ladies, okay, so. I can only speak for men, okay. I, I, I don't know anything about women. I'm not a male virgin, but I have some experiences, not too much, okay? I have some, have some dating experience, not too much, okay? But I, not, no, I'm not a male virgin, no. Well, in my past, yeah, some kind and generous ladies. God bless them, okay? Kind and generous ladies. Had crush on me. Can you imagine this Alaskan aging Asian American ASS? Okay, even when I was in Korea, some kind and generous ladies had crush on me. Okay, oh, God bless them because I feel so flattered and honored, privileged. I thank them, okay? I thank God. What a great honor, okay? God bless them. So kind and generous, okay? Yeah. God bless them, okay? In Korea, America, okay? Some kind and generous ladies had crush on me, okay? God bless them, okay? They're so generous. May God bless them. Some kind and generous ladies even dated me. <clears throat> we had some dates. Yeah, in my past, okay. They let me buy them bouquets of flowers. They let me allow me to buy them dinner, spend some couple of hours in public space in a restaurant. They allowed me to spend my money to buy bouquets of flowers and buy them some nice dinner, you know, nice restaurants. Very grateful, okay, so. That's how we guys are, okay? Oh, online dating, okay, to get a date when it comes to penny, penniless, penny pinching, penny counting, guys like us, it's not easy to get a date. Well, some other guys, they are very good at it, but I'm not. <laughs> to get one date, it's like in online dating site back in the days. I don't do that anymore, okay? Back in the days, online dating site, if I ask out 100 ladies, one of them say yes. So it takes months to get one date. And we guys, we pay for it, you know, flowers. But we are still very grateful, very thankful. To this couple of hours, like Friday night. I mean, no touchy touchy, no hanky pinky, it's just, you know, and conversation. They allow us kind and generous ladies in the world, any countries, okay? They allow us to buy them dinner, buy them bouquets of flowers, and look at them spending time, maybe one hour, two hours, even 30 minutes on a Friday night. We don't take that for granted because we know we guys is, is, that's not easy. Maybe some millionaires, billionaires, maybe it's very easy for them, right? But for us, regular, normal, average guys, 
who don't have that much money. It's very precious memorable events because we don't get to have the kind of dates not often. We don't have any money, power, fame. Yeah, we have a job. We don't have that much money, but we pay the bills. We have a job, okay. But just because we are not famous, powerful, rich, wealthy, we don't get to have that kind of experience very often, okay? Maybe once in a while, right? Like once a year, <laughs> once in a decade. So it's very precious experience, this dating scene. It's like one evening, Friday, okay? And we are very grateful, very memorable event. Just one dinner with a lady. Okay, it means a lot to us, single guys, okay. Every single guys, we're not billionaires, millionaires, okay. Every single guys, like 99% of the world, okay. When we get a date, we get so excited, do our hair, take a shower, Right, I'm trying to rhyme. Right? Well, rhyming comes to me naturally by now. Okay? I rap, learned rap, hip hop. Okay, it took me some great deal of training and education. Okay, but I learned. Okay, how to rhyme naturally. Right? Yeah, we do our hair. We do our shower. Okay. Yeah, dress up nicely and buy a bouquet of flowers. Because we are poor, yeah, from Walmart. Okay, maybe gas station. This one red roses from gas station, okay. And yeah, we pay the bills. Yeah, dinner. Yeah, it's on me. But we, yeah, we pay for everything, okay. But we are still very grateful. Because we don't get to have that kind of opportunity, chance to spend time with one lady, one dinner, one evening in this public restaurant. Very precious experience. Because we don't get that many, okay? Right? <laughs> Do I look pathetic? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I am pathetic, okay. That's typical male experience anywhere in the world. Okay? It's not easy to be a male, right? All right. Time is up, okay. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Have a good night. Bye.